Grace Haverstock, a godly widow, stretches her will to convince everyone that she is not a witch. Consequently, she faces the devil himself, who challenges her faith and sanity to save her daughter. Grace holds Joseph, her husband's letter, with swollen eyes after reading his farewell. Crestfallen, she prays and takes Joseph's sword from his trunk. In the rain, Grace drags the sword to her husband, who is hanged on a tree near their house. While the rain masks her grief, she digs a pit for her beloved. Then, she swings the sword repeatedly to sever the rope, which carries the dead man's weight until it finally drops him. Grace drags and buries Joseph with her own hands. A few days ago, Joseph gave his wife a self-made cross necklace to protect them while he's away. Grace tried to stop her husband from leaving because of the plague, but he insisted. Soon after, Joseph delivered grain to the pub and entered for a drink, where he met his landlord, Squire Pendleton, who told him to keep an eye on his wife. A gypsy, Lenora, shows interest in Joseph but is told he's married. Suddenly, a stranger beside him falls to the ground and shakes uncontrollably, which means he has the disease. Joseph showed symptoms of the illness at home through his fever and fresh wound. He tried to stay away from his family, but Grace discovered his condition. She hastily went to the forest to look for herbs. While she's away, Joseph decided to save his family from his worsening sickness. So he bid goodbye to his daughter Abby and wrote his wife a letter. He grabbed a rope and hanged himself outside, where Grace found him lifeless. The following day, Pedleton visits their house to confirm if Joseph died from the disease. Grace tells him they'll wait in isolation to ensure that she and Abby didn't catch the same fate. Hearing this, the landlord reminds her that rent's due next week or they must leave. The widow mocks his apathy, but guarantees that she'll pay. A red cross marks Grace's door, which tells that they're victims of the plague. Inside, Grace opens her husband's savings box but finds it insufficient to pay their dues. She grabs and hugs Joseph's shirt to seek comfort and later falls asleep. Grace dreams of a passionate night with Joseph, where they try to conceive Abby. The sweet memory takes a dark turn when she finds her husband's corpse beside her. Suddenly, Grace wakes up screaming in sorrow which makes her baby cry. Days later, the widow rides a horse with Abby to town when she passes by her friends, Kate and Morton, on their cart. Grace assures that she hasn't caught the illness and the couple bid their condolences. Kate tries to stop her from entering the disease-infested town, but Grace insists. Nevertheless, Kate volunteers to look after Abby to lessen her friend's burden. Near town, she passes by a rotten corpse abandoned due to the plague. Finally, she reaches the metropolis, where she sees a man marking doors with a red cross, more abandoned corpses the strays feed on, and rats scrambling around. Grace enters the pub and introduces herself to Mr. Tuttle, Joseph's friend. The widow asks him for a small loan, but he refuses to help. Instead, he informs her that an old woman, Molly Pryor, was arrested for witchery and advises her to leave town. Before Grace leaves, Mr. Tuttle reveals that Pendleton witnessed Joseph mistakenly drink from the ill man's cup, which infected him. Truthfully, Joseph's cup was switched by the greedy landlord. Outside, Grace sees plague doctors with a beak mask collect the dead. She urgently leaves when one of the bodies looks straight at her. That night, Grace wakes up from the cold, so she gets up and lights a lamp. When she turns, she sees Joseph, who tells her to do what must be done. He exits the room with the rope trailing behind him, and his widow follows suit. Grace runs after the retreating rope which leads to her husband's grave. She pulls it until Joseph's corpse emerges from the ground. His wedding ring glimmers, so she takes it as a sign and keeps it. The following day, the landlord comes to collect his money and enters the house. He pities the mother and child, thinking Grace has nothing to give. Then, the woman hands him her late husband's ring, which covers them for three months. However, Pendleton doubts that she could pay for the months after. Unwillingly, Grace surrenders her ring, which will cover another three months. The landlord proposes an arrangement where she could pay through sexual favors, but the woman refuses and asks him to leave. Then, Pendleton shuts the door and grabs her. He forcefully kisses Grace, so she slaps him, but he hits her back. Edwin, the landlord's assistant, hears the commotion from the house, but he hesitates to help. On the floor, Grace struggles to push Pendleton off her. She reaches for the iron rod on the fireplace and burns her assailant's hand. Distracted, she kicks him in the face and threatens him with a gun. Finally, the landlord takes his horse and leaves with Edwin following behind. Back then, Grace told Joseph about her mother, who was murdered at Blackthorn Castle when she was young. The witchfinder, Judge Moorcroft, made her confess to witchery at her daughter's expense. He sentenced her to death while the whole village watched her burn. Despite her backstory, Joseph loved his wife. That night, Pendleton enters the pub and claims Grace Grace attacked him while he's collecting her due. Other villagers doubt him, but he threatens to raise their rent. Then, Pendleton blames the widow for Joseph's death, even if he's the reason the man fell ill. The townsfolk start talking about the poor woman and claims that she's a witch like her friend, Molly Pryor. Mr. Tuttle and Lenora affirm their suspicions, so they agree to burn her too. In her house, Grace tends to Abby as thunder strikes. She hears noises outside, so she takes her gun and checks it. Seeing no one around, she goes inside and meets a man in a plague mask who calls her a witch. Two other men come to take her. So 
so she defends herself and takes Abby upstairs. The men thrust their swords at the ceiling and pierce her hand. Learning that she bleeds, they smash a lamp and burn the house as they leave. Grace jumps out from the back with Abby and escapes. Meanwhile, Pendleton rebukes the man who burned his property. When Grace runs to the forest, a masked man blocks her way, who she learns to be her friend, Morton. He drags the mother and child to the men who thought that she's dead. Pendleton accuses Grace of witchery and confining with the devil. They take Abby from her and Morton hits her across the face. They tie Grace's hands on the cart and drag her away barefoot as she cries in agony. They reach the city where the accused witch Molly hangs in the middle of the square. The men drag Grace to Blackthorn Castle and lock her behind bars. Meanwhile, Kate discovers Morton's mask and confronts him about her friend's detention. He claims that Pendleton mustn't know they're associated with Grace. Kate argues, but Morton smacks his wife and threatens her. At prison, Grace wakes up to Joseph's voice, so she exits the open cellar. She sees her burned mother behind bars who lunges at her. Then she sees the devil's face as an unknown force drags her across the ground. Suddenly, Grace wakes up while Edwin slides her food and runs away. Then, Grace calls Astrid, the girl locked beside her, who's detained for stealing after her family perishes from the sickness. The deranged man across them is Reverend Malcolm, who talks to himself and believes that the devil causes the plague. Astrid encourages Grace to persevere since the men will try and break her as they did to every prisoner. The following day, they drag Grace to the square beside lifeless Molly. The townsfolk look at her with hatred as the prison guard, Sutter, places her hands above her head and rips her clothes. She sees Joseph's image among the crowd, which emboldens her spirit. Then Peck, another guard, starts flogging her back which she endures. Afterward, the crowd dissipates, and Pendleton walks up to her. He claims that he can help her, but Grace refuses. So, the landlord threatens to report her to Judge Moorcroft unless she confesses. However, Grace remains relentless and asks about her daughter. Pendleton assures Abby's safety, but he can't say to the widow whose judgment day will come. Elsewhere, Judge Moorcroft and the scarred woman, Ursula, enters a tavern where a widower, Watkins, rebukes the judge for killing his wife. However, Ursula steps in his way and when Watkins charges, Ursula stabs him repeatedly. In the castle, Grace notices that another prisoner has the sickness as she goes back to her cell, but the guards dismiss her. Edwin delivers Grace some water, but she begs him for news about her daughter. The boy scurries away upon hearing noises. Meanwhile, Moorcroft arrives at the castle where Pendleton welcomes him. He believes the devil never rests, so he asks to see the accused immediately and advises Pendleton not to let her sleep. When Moorcroft sees Grace, he claims that salvation is coming and prepares for her trial. Dreaming, Grace calls for Joseph in the puddle. Instead, the devil emerges, making her kneel and pray. She awakens frightened, so she wails throughout the night. That morning, Peck wakes the dozing woman for her trial. Judge Moorcroft announces the evidence which claims her guilty of witchery. He takes the widow's cross necklace and prides himself on uncovering the truth. However, Grace is unfazed and matches his resolve. At the corner, Pendleton watches as the guards strap Grace on the wooden rack. While Sister Agatha examines her body, Moorcroft wears Grace's necklace. Then, the nun discovers a mark on the woman's neck, which the judge believes to be the devil's trace. Afterward, the guards drag the bare widow back into her cell. Edwin hastily brings her extra food and encourages her to stay strong. At dinner, Moorcroft tells Pendleton about the corpse-ridden site in London while people fled to the countryside. The landlord insists that they must destroy evil wherever they go, and suggests tormenting Grace until she confesses, which the judge guarantees. That night, Grace longs for her late husband. She sees Joseph in her cell and delves into a passionate exchange. But when she opens her eyes, she sees the devil yearning for her soul. When it slits her throat, she wakes up and gets doused by cold water. She prays once more at the sight of her unscathed throat. In the distance, Sutter worries they might misjudge the poor woman and be condemned to hell. However, Peck claims they're already in hell anyway, given the misfortunes of the plague. That morning, Edwin delivers news that Abby's in the South Tower under Pendleton's care. Grace doubts her safety, but the boy scurries before she can respond. Later, Grace is strapped to the rack wearing an iron bridle in front of Moorcroft, who reveals that he exhumed Joseph's body to seek evidence. He shows her the rope her husband used, implying that Grace murdered him since he was a godly man who mustn't commit the mortal sin of taking his own life. Then, the rack turns, so she lies down as Ursula stabs her feet with a large needle. After piercing multiple parts of her body, Edwin helps unstrap her. He helps her walk down to her cell while Grace still refuses to surrender. She sees the disease-ridden prisoner dead in his cell and seems to have an idea of a way out. In Moorcroft's room, Ursula admires Grace's courage, but the judge claims it to be a mask and reminds her of their responsibility. He reminisces when he took Ursula from the fire that burned her. The rain which saved her enlightened her to fight against the evil which made her a witch. Ursula regains her resolve, so Moorcroft tells her to speak with Grace. Restless, Grace sees herself fornicate with the devil and hears Joseph again. She refuses to look at him as she thinks that the devil imitates him. When Joseph leaves, Grace turns around and sees the angered devil. Then, the villagers charge her as she hides her face. Suddenly, Grace awakens and realizes that she's only dreaming. As she sleeps, her mother comforts her but her vision clears and sees Ursula inside her cell. The scarred woman gives her food and asks about the devil.
Carnival, who she claims to speak with her as well. Grace denies it, but Ursula shares that Judge Moorcroft enlightened her, which she derived from her torture. The widow calls for her mother and husband, who tell her to surrender. Suddenly, she sees the devil and finds Ursula using Abby as leverage. However, Grace shames Ursula and calls her a witch. Afterward, Grace receives a letter saying Abby's safe. Then, Peck drags Leonora into a cell, but Grace dismisses her. Meanwhile, Judge Moorcroft commits self-flagellation in front of an altar to prepare. The following day, Grace is dragged to the rack in front of Moorcroft and passes by Kate. Moorcroft presents the evidence to the villagers who came to watch. Kate openly disagrees, so Martin drags her outside. The judge asks the accused if she admits her sins, but Grace doesn't answer. Then, Moorcroft takes a pear-shaped instrument which inflicts extreme pain when inserted and screwed open. Moorcroft asks again, but Grace's resolve to stand by truth remains stronger than any iron that torments her. Grace's horrible torture begins, while villagers who bear witness look away as her screams pierces the room. Seeing Grace withstand intense pain, Moorcroft sentences her and Abby to death, which earns Pendleton's disagreement. Meanwhile, on their way home, Kate argues with Morton, so he pushes her off their cart. They fight, and Kate throws a rock at their horse. The horse gets startled and moves forward along with the cart, killing her husband, who lies beneath the wheels. In the cell, the other prisoner perishes from the sickness, true to Grace's words. Then, Edwin delivers her food, and Grace reveals her plan to escape. Grace calls for Judge Moorcroft, who accepts her request. Peck gives her clothes to wear in front of the nobleman. When they leave, Edwin slits the dead man's wrist and collects his blood. In the judge's room, she adheres to Moorcroft's wishes in exchange for Abby in his arms. Meanwhile, Edwin pours the blood into the judge's wine before Pendleton discovers. Moorcroft accepts Grace's bargain, but Abby remains in Ursula's care. He lets the widow hold her child for the last time when Edwin serves the wine. Ursula takes Abby away and mistakenly leaves the large needles. Moorcroft offers Grace some wine, but she declines. She watches closely and drinks as well to convince him into drinking. Grace kneels before him to confess that she's not a witch and stabs Moorcroft's hands on the table. She introduces herself as the daughter of a woman he burned years ago. Grace locks the door and retrieves Joseph's necklace. Meanwhile, Pendleton makes advances toward Ursula, but she threatens him with a knife. He enters the room where Abby lies and takes a nap. Then, Edwin enters Abby's room and cautiously takes her while distracting the dogs and threatening the maid. When Pendleton wakes up, Edwin immediately smacks him with a dipper. In Moorcroft's room, Grace carefully approaches the door to see who knocks. Suddenly, Ursula lunges from the side and pins Grace on the table. However, the mother grabs the lamp and smashes it into Ursula's head, where she knocks down the candles and sets the drapes on fire. The flames catch Ursula's clothes, so she runs out of the window and plunges to death. Then, Peck enters the room and points a gun at Grace. Suddenly, Edwin thrusts the sword into his heart from behind. Grace takes the gun and gives it to Moorcroft to free himself, who still has his hand stabbed on the table. She leaves him in the burning room and runs away. Meanwhile, Pendleton awakes and tells the guards to sound the alarm. While people scramble to extinguish the fire, Grace, Edwin, and Abby sneak past the gates. However, Grace backs away and cuts the ropes to close the gate. She then reveals that she drank the wine. Dumbfounded, Edwin tells her that Pendleton mistakenly switched the wine, so it isn't poisoned. They try to open the gates, but the villagers notice her, so she tells Edwin to find and ask Kate for help. Grace runs back to the prison alone and retrieves a bazooka which she fires at her pursuers. She points it next to Sutter, who hands her the keys to free Astrid and Lenora. However, Pendleton arrives and shoots Astrid. He swings his sword at Grace until she stabs him with a stake. The landlord pleads Grace, but she beheads him with a sword. Meanwhile, Moorcroft finally removes his hand and points the gun to his head, which appears to be empty, so the judge awaits death in the fiery room. Wearied, Grace longs to be with her husband, but Joseph's voice encourages her to live. She goes down the well at the corner and soon emerges at the lake outside town. By the road, Edwin finds Kate, who sits by her dead husband. She sees Abby and mourns over Grace, who they thought was dead. In a glimpse of hope, Edwin joins Kate on their journey far away from the town, which bears witness to the hellish damnation of the innocent. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.